Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Uh, as I said yesterday, I'd be back with a, another video on uh, the outcome of the US presidential election. Um, so the first thing I want to say is congratulations to Mr. Trump, and commiserations to, uh, to Mrs. Clinton, and obviously to their various supporters as well. Um, so I've, I've already, you know, taking a look at social media, taking a uh, hearing from the various people that, that I talk to anyway. Um, obviously there are a lot of people that are unhappy about this, a lot of people who are happy about it, a lot of people who are somewhere in between, um, a lot of people that are just scared because both were, were terrible options, uh, some people who just can't believe it because it's it's very much a f an, ex an extension of the comedy of errors that has been 2016 uh, so far. Um, and so in response to that, unlike uh, certain other places where it's going to be either people railing or people celebrating or people um, kind of just going, okay, what we need to do is we just need to, to, to hold together and keep moving. There might be an element of that in what I'm saying. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to do was take a look at um, take a look at kind of the, the exit polls and just see kind of where this has all come from, who voted for what, what the perceptions are, because that's a, a big thing in this. Perception was a big thing with this election. Um, and the attitudes floating backwards and forwards. And then there were a couple of things at, that I just want to point out at the end, just because, yeah, there are going to be hard times, both for people that supported this change um, and, and the things that are going to happen with it, and for the people the, that fought against it, you know, there's got to be a lot of um, kind of back and forth with this, uh, I'm sure. And so I just want to, excuse me, I just want to put out some some ideas, some thoughts that may help people along. Um, and many of them also relate back to other stuff that I've, I've already talked about previously. And a lot of the things that I'll be saying towards the end also apply to things like Brexit. They apply to things like... Um, well, any other political situation around the planet and just, you know, to, to arguably troubling and conflict-heavy areas of life anyway. But anyway, um, yeah, so we'll take a look at the, the, um, the exit polls first. Okay, so here, here we've got the, the uh, write-up of the, the exit polls from the 2016 US election. Um, from the New York Times, uh, or at least published in the New York Times. It was originally done by Edison Research Group, which was done for the national election poll or pool or something like that, which which is a collection of, of all of the various, or at least a good number of the various news groups. So it was done uh, by a, a research group for a group effort on, on broadcasting the results. Um, and then, you know, taking a look at this up at the top, you've obviously got the the Clinton to Trump um, comparison overall, as well as you've got the Republicans and Senate taking uh, to being taken by the the Republicans. Granted, the the Senate not a huge majority, but enough. And same goes for the um, the House as well. I mean, none of these were big majorities. I mean, the other day I was actually talking about this with uh, with Hannah, um, my girlfriend, and we were discussing what we thought the margin would be, and it was 60 points either way on the, uh, the um, overall um, numbers was what we kind of agreed on due to the, the swing states and some of them being quite grey area, not sure which way they were going to go due to having high, you know, substantial rural communities or large minority communities or whatever else. So, you know, having it be, um, what, what is that? 61 points, give or take, you know, it's, it's not a, it wasn't a bad shout on our part. But anyway, let's take a look at, at the numbers. Um, so apparently more people, more uh, men voted for Trump as many uh, or, or relative to more women voting to for Hillary sorry I'll be able to speak in a sec honest um, you know the breakdown is is like that and to be fair that doesn't really surprise me all that much and before people start screaming misogyny or whatever else you know Trump appealed to one subset of the community Hillary appealed to the other another subset of the community and 
you've got those um, those divisions also run along uh, the lines of gender as well, whereby, for example, where Trump is talking about the, the hard-working average Joe, there are a lot more men in that position than there are women to one degree or another. And then when you're talking, when, when Hillary is talking about some of the more highbrow ideas and, and values and so on, then there are an awful lot of um, young academics that are female, an awful, awful lot more women coming out of universities and things now uh, compared to men, and so they've picked up on their ideas. But again, there isn't a huge difference between the two. You know, it's, it's only barely over 50-50 in, in either way. And so it's like, uh, you know, gender, of, I don't feel played a big thing in this. You know, it didn't, didn't seem to, to play a, a huge role by any stretch. Um, and so anyone that's screaming patriarchy, anyone that's screaming um, any of those things, and all the people also who, who were doing the campaigning about around have Hillary be your first female president you know i think you kind of shot yourselves in the foot there because most people obviously don't you know there's a small percent that tip it either way but most people really don't seem to care all that much um race wise again rather unsurprisingly you've got the um the white um majority especially uh voting in favor of trump whilst the majority on all of the other um kind of uh, racial backgrounds, racial demographics, they they all voted more in favour of Hillary. Um, age, you know, right, again, as we saw with, with Brexit and stuff like that, you've got more of the older generation who are fed up, disenfranchised, upset, you know, wanting to fix their, their things for whatever. They're voting for, for Trump whilst you've got the younger uh, generation voting for Hillary but again that's still very straight kind of close down the middle um, here again you've got a much closer kind of uh, cut down the middle there but where you've got the higher educated people the people with more information in theory um, and the people who have who've taken more time out to to further educate themselves you've got them voting for uh, Hillary because they resonate with the ideas that she's putting forward whilst the very um, layman's terms kind of uh, discussions and insults and things being thrown around by Trump were things that, that were more highly resonated with by the left that are educated um, and then breakdown of education by race yeah sure the the, the people rather unsurprisingly the, lar the largest group of people that voted for Trump are the white individuals who are more poorly educated um, so you know no surprises there you've got again here, here you've got the people who were on the lower end of the income spectrum voting democratic people uh, you know, i mean it's still very close down the middle but the people who were voting for um for hillary were also the people who were voting for um or in theory in this particular instance were the people who who had um a lower wage Whilst you've got a lot more people who were on higher salaries voting for Trump because, you know, why wouldn't they? Um, considering his tax plan and whatever else. Uh, people in cities being more inclined to vote for, um, for Hillary over Trump, whilst rural communities, you know, substantially more inclined towards Trump because, again, education, the money coming in, um, how, you know, if... if when he starts talking about um, things like the number of times he's upset um, Latino people with the things that he said, then it kind of comes down to in uh, kind of cities and, and even in suburbs to a degree, you know, where it's again not quite 50 50 but much closer, you've got a lot more in the way of um, interaction with those minorities. And as a result, you can see, you know, there's an evidence um, for yourself to go, actually, they're not all bad. Oh, he's actually t talking bullshit. Oh, I've never seen this. Um, whilst in a rural community or a smaller environment, then that's, you know, you have one bad person come through. That makes up your, your mind for everybody. Um, party affiliations, oh, what a surprise. Independents are, are very in the middle. 
with a few more voting for uh, Trump than Hillary, because, probably because anti-establishment candidate to a degree. But then, rather unsurprisingly, the rest is all along party lines. Um, same goes for the political ideologies between conservatism and, and liberalism and the people in the middle like myself. You know, very much a 50-50 a breakdown, although in this instance you've got a few more of the moderates voting for Hillary over Trump, because probably because Trump is so loud and annoying. Again, here you go, you've got um, more uh, Christians very much sat in the, the Trump camp, whilst you've got more um, of the, the various other um, religious affiliations voting for, for Hillary. Um, you've got, rather unsurprisingly, considering Republican candidate, you've got much more of the white evangelical or born-again Christians in Trump's camp. Um, whilst a lot more of the ones that wouldn't be as, as uh, outspoken in that way being in Hillary's. That I don't really... I mean, the significance of um, religious attendance is... Meh, to me um, more married people voting in favour of Trump I'm not entirely sure why though That the, 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 the causation on that is a bit odd but I'm not entirely sure but then again I suppose you've got more people in um, lower income or uh, with larger families especially in the white communities whereby you've got much more of a conservative tradition of marriage maybe that's where you can see that number skew I'm not sure rather unsurprisingly more LGBT Sorry, LGBT uh, people voting for Hillary, but there's still a, a very kind of straight down the middle, um, or coming from Hillary rather, but you've got a very straight down the middle in regards to um, the the straight or non-LGBT uh, individuals in their voting. More people with military service. See now, this one I'm uh, this one I'm not too I'm I'm a little uncertain of the causation behind because I would I would potentially say that it's because of you've got things like Benghazi and all of the other scandals around Hillary and how uncaring she's been you know portrayed as being whether she actually is or isn't I you know can't claim to know but she's um, but I think that's harmed her there um, now this this one was interesting the direction of the country more Hillary supporters and I, again I feel like this is kind of along party lines where you've got more Hillary supporters who either feel that the country is in doing pretty well, you know, 90 to 8% in favour of Hillary and believing that the, the country, their country is generally doing the right thing, going the right direction. But then even the people who think that the country is seriously off track still find, you know, 25% feel the, that Hillary is preferable and then you've got the the... 69 there that, that seem to think that, that from Trump's side of things that seem to think that, that the country's gone off track now here's one that really really interests me and this is one of the important ones I feel because they're talking about the next one is the most important issue here and you've got Hillary's side that are having one discussion because they're talking foreign policy and they're talking the economy Yeah, they're talking about how to relate to people and how to trade you know, two very important things. But then you've got Trump's side of things that are having a completely different conversation because they're much more focused on terrorism and immigration, that threat from the other. And so you've got, on one side, they're, I mean, it's all motivated by fear, but on one side you've got the motivations of um, la lack of connection, of uh, lack of resource, um, and things like that. And on the other side, you've got the world outside is scary and I don't want it coming near me. And as a result, I feel like that's where this, this election kind of broke down between the two, just in the just from my observations. Because you've got one lot talking about how scary the outside world is and the other one talking about how scary it is to be left alone. And so they're not having the same conversation and they're not on the same level, and that's why policy went out the window. Um, and you've got Trump now, who gave all of those vague promises and statements. The fuck knows how he's going to achieve all of them, uh, if any of them, really. But he, you know, the, you've had this this breakdown because they're not having the same conversation, they're not addressing the same issues. Everything's falling to pieces, and so the, that's why the conversation at times just 
devolved into name calling. Name calling that was probably fairly truthful on one side or the other, but it was sniping for the sake of it, you know. And I feel this is possibly where Hillary um, lost out because you had Trump getting down into the, into the muck, um, surrounded by the people that, that didn't mind that. And then you had Hillary's camp or Hillary's people uh, supporters and so on who were much more willing to try and take the high road to view the big picture and everything else and yet then they saw the person who they were having to put their trust and faith in to lead this this whole um, endeavor they saw her jumping down into the muck with Trump and doing silly shit and taking shots back at him and as a result you know I feel like if they had just stayed on, if, if there had been a better conversation, if there had been more communication, greater understanding, more widespread information on this, then this kind of thing wouldn't have happened and you could have had each one of those points as a full conversation instead of having it be seemingly one group having one conversation, the other group having another. Not saying that, that there aren't, you know, obviously there are people on, the, on Hillary's side that are concerned about immigration, but that's obviously a much greater concern for Trump's camp, and that's what he's played off. Um, uh, moving on, condi condition of the the nation's economy. You've got a lot of people thinking from Hillary's side that it's it's either excellent or good. And to be fair, you know there have been some big boosts uh, to the economy throughout Obama's years, uh, considering the state that it was left in by Bush. Um, and so as a result, yeah, you know, there have been things that have been worked out, things that have been developed, you know, jobs have been created. You had Obama's stimulus uh, packages and so on earlier on uh, in his in his two terms uh, that helped to generate an awful lot of um, kind of recovery after the recession. Um, but then, you know, more especially seemingly because there's a lot of fear and you've got people like Donald Trump suggesting that America isn't great it used to be it isn't now and then it's, it could be great again you know he's got a lot of support on on the side of no the economy is actually okay or terrible when it's not um, all told but it's the perception they have been told a thing they've maybe not they've probably not looked into it and so they've been you know they've they've assigned themselves to it especially considering it's a thing that runs with a lot of other republican party lines and so on and so forth but this is where again some of the more perceptive things are, are coming in it's really getting into people's heads and having them um kind of be fearful of and, and argue on different things um family financial situation um you've got more of, of hillary side saying that it's um, it's better today. You've got more of Trump's side saying it's worse today. But then you've got a, a literal even split of 46% on either side saying it's exactly the same. So it would be interesting to dive deeper into those numbers to actually see whether or not the perception of it's worse today for me is actually true or whether or not the perception of, oh, well, it actually it's better today for me is true you know that would be really interesting um, and then this, this one again really interesting thing to me because you've got um, what do you expect for the next generation of Americans and you've got the people who are voting for Hillary who, who, who you know at the time probably thought they were gonna win going well a better life for, for tomorrow and you got the Trump people who either lacked confidence or who thought they were going to win, but still, for some reason, thought that there would be a worse life, you know, than than the current period for the next generation. And then, you know, you had again the the more Hillary voters thinking that you had um, that it would probably be about the same, you know, probably realizing that Hillary was kind of a. a could be described maybe as a legacy candidate from Obama carrying on a lot of the same things uh, to one degree or another um, but it's really interesting that, to me that the perception of the Republicans who seem to be very much the more emotive and, and negatively kind of driven party um, I find it really interesting that their fear of the bad things 
carries over into the next generation even though they think they're solving the problem now seemingly that's that's an interesting one for me but yeah any anyway, um, effect of trade on other countries perceptions being you know the the trade with other countries creates more jobs from Hillary side uh, takes away jobs from the the uh, Trump side a lot of Hillary's thinking that it has no effect um, you know that's that's an interesting one because arguably it does both but again I suppose it depends on where you're coming from you know what background you're coming from as to what those perceptions are which again speaks to uh, some of the st stats we looked at at the beginning in regards to how educated people are and where they're coming from um, what should happen to to the illegal immigrants you know you've got a lot more on the side of uh, on Hillary side asking for amnesty or looking to probably um, allow a, uh, an option um, for them to become legal and to continue to contribute to a country whilst you know you've got the, the much more um, hardline kind of again fear of the outside um, you know anyone that is found to be an illegal immigrant needs to be deported immediately 84% there all on, on Trump's side all looking to, to have those people removed um, rather unsurprisingly again party lines tend to divide the, the support or opposition to the building of the wall um, people thinking that the federal government is working you've got much more satisfaction or enthusiasm on Hillary's side than you do on the um, on the Republican side, on, on Trump's side and part of me again thinks that that's just party divisions you've had eight years of a, of a Democratic president and a Republican uh, House and Congress that have just kind of held things solidly in place they've, they've obstructed everything that, that has tried to be worked on in which case it's no surprise to me that they think it's ineffective and that they're not particularly happy because it has been ineffective, pointedly ineffective, just to stop the leader that they've had from achieving anything, you know, to paint him in a bad light and all the rest of it, which then moves us on to the next question that they asked, which was about Obama's performance, with, rather unsurprisingly again, divided by party lines, um, you've got more Hillary supporters, more Democrats in favour of, of um, Obama's performance, and you've got more Republicans who, who are, are uh, very much against um, the way that he's performed. But then here's another interesting one, with the description of vote, whereby you, you know, I, I, I strongly favour my candidate, in which case you've got more belief in Hillary, arguably, on her side than you do in Trump from his. Um, I like my candidate, but I have reservations literally down the middle because both candidates were by no means popular or particularly, uh, particularly great. And as a result, you've got a fairly even split there, pretty much, you know, with the exception of one percentile point almost uh, a dead split and then I dislike the other candidate more people voted for Trump because they didn't like Hillary than because either were viable options so now that's an interesting one to me because again it's the perception of the outside being bad and it's the voting for the lesser of two evils to keep them safe you know, it, this has been, even though this isn't hugely a survival issue, that's what it's been reduced to in the eyes of these people, and so they've acted accordingly. Um, you know, which is that's, that's scary. I feel sorry for these people that they've they've been put in this situation. You know, granted, yes, there are people who are in um, either camp, both Trumps and Hillarys, who are extremists who are horrible people who want to segregate society and cause problems. But the thing is, that's not going to be all of the the millions of people that placed their vote yesterday. And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, I feel really sorry for the people here that have, have made Trump their president. Um, and who have, you know, ultimately done it out of fear for their survival, fear for their their situation, fear that the world is encroaching upon them, you know, that that that's gotta suck living in that much fear. You know, that that's a real shame. Um but it's what the the whole race devolved into and no one attempted to to be more positive about things. The most positive things that were said were things like 
uh, stronger together and make America great again, which were just two party slogans, which people were rather unsurprisingly pushed or running from fear and decided to cling to those things like safety blankets, like small children. And that's, you know, it's, it's considering that every single person that voted is an adult. That's a kind of scary and terrifying thing for them. And seeing them run to this, all these adults just fleeing these bad situations just because they're scary. You know, it, it demonstrates a kind of um, how unhealthy these things are. Um, but then, you know, the important qual qualities in the candidate, every single uh, of the four there, you've got um, cares about people like me, whereby Hillary is apparently more, more caring or perceived to be um, by the people that voted for them. Um, has the right experience, more people uh, in favour of Hillary having the right experience, has good judgment, more people in favour of Hillary having good judgment, bring, but in, in that second one there, can bring needed change. Only, you know, like, that's the only thing that the Republicans have, that, that voted here, that, that were part of this um, this sample for these these exit polls. You know, that's the only quality of those four, really, that stands out as something that they believed in heavily. Um, and again, you know, there are there are lots of people crying out for change in the world. Unfortunately, they don't know what change is needed. A lot of the people crying out for the change that feel that they're not, they're not being listened to and, and so on and so forth, they feel very afraid and they feel very helpless. And so what it comes down to is that, you know, there's... They want the change. They voted for Obama because change. They've voted voted now for for Trump because change. And you you can't really fault them for that. You know, I would love to see a greater change. And you know, I could put a put out a list of things that I would like to see change. I could try and be more constructive with it. But there are a lot of people that don't have the information or the the eloquence to communicate that as easily. And, and especially when they feel particularly disenfranchised, it can be really, as I said, fearful and panicky time for them. And they, they'll shut down and that makes it harder for them to articulate anyway, um, which is probably why slogans, chants and things like that, because it's repetitive, because it's easy to pick up. Those are the things that people kind of cling to. Um, better commander in chief, literally just down, um, down party lines, um, people thinking that the... the um, more people thinking that Hillary has a um, a better temperament, although it is in the, uh, a fairly even split either way down party lines. More people feeling that Trump doesn't have the correct temperament to be a good president or to serve effectively as president. Um, you know, that's a, uh, again, divided by party lines, but there is a noticeable dip there. Um, trustworthiness of the two candidates again mostly down party lines but there are you know there there's no two ways about that you can fact check these people and you know objectively from what has been said and done you know go on to politi uh, politifact and and take a look you know you've got hillary has told far less um porkies than uh, than trump has so you know if honesty really mattered to you then that's a that's a thing that maybe ignoring party lines and looking at the the objective numbers would be a thing um but then you know when when people decided decided to vote rather um i mean it says decided how to vote but then it's you've got the uh the list of dates of time periods so i think that's more a case of when did you decide who to vote for um and so, you know, you've you've got a lot of Trump people that only really worked it out um, over, like, the last couple of weeks, uh, over the last few days even. But then Hillary's, you've got a lot more um, that were much more aware beforehand, seemingly. And that, that could be caused by all manner of things. It could be looking at policies. It could be whatever else. Mm, excuse me. But then... Uh, yeah, they've they've removed the additional options and they've said, okay, so who's voting for what? And you've got more Trump people that wouldn't have voted if it was a, if it was only a, a direct thing between um, Hillary and Trump. 
but then you've got again rather unsurprisingly a direct even split between party lines there you know it's, it's uh, an interesting interesting set of things to note but so that's that's a, a, a example of kind of like how we um how we got to today, you know, what went into it, and at least what I'm picking up from the various numbers that I'm seeing here. And so the things that I, uh, I'm i looking to, to now just take a look at is, you know, we can obviously see from this that there's a lot of miscommunication, you know, there's a lot of fear in the world at the moment, and especially when it comes to big issues that are thrown on normal people. And um, so there are, there are three things that I just want to point out. Firstly, there's a lot of like slinging of, of the word bigot and racist and xenophobe and, and all that back and forth. And it's like, yes, well, you know, I'll say, I'll say this in regards to both things like Brexit, in regards to this, whilst, you know, not all racists, for example, are going to be conscribed to one group. Yeah, that that you have a there may be a slight majority, slight you know, more substantial number of them in, in one camp than another. But I can guarantee you that they are split across both. Yeah, to one degree or another. Um, and then you know all of these things, all of these negative thoughts and everything else. It's all around fear. It's all around being absolutely terrified of what's happening around you, feeling out of control, wanting to strike back. You know, this is the the reason why these things keep happening is due to how um, hard the world is to live in now when you've got so many people and you've got such large social structures that, that it can be really hard for people to navigate, especially when, you know, this isn't stuff that we're educated on in school as much as it probably should be. Um, and so as a result, you know, the first thing I would say is you, you can't just brand everyone with the same um, label. You know, do not tar everybody with the same brush. There are undesirables everywhere. What it comes down to is, you know, be understanding have the conversation because anyone on one side that shuts down conversations screams rants oh all of these people are morons everyone that voted for trump is a moron all of all of the people that even thought hillary would win are morons you know all whichever which where whichever which way you want to say it if you're using that and branding all of those people all you're doing is shutting down a conversation that needs to happen you have that conversation, you reach an understanding, you understand why someone would vote for Hillary, why someone would vote for Trump, why someone would vote for Remain or Leave or, or any of these other things. You know, it, it all boils down to have the conversation, generate the understanding, try and reach a compromise even. Yeah, there are, there are numerous common sense ways to achieve things that would allow at least a good amount of satisfaction on both sides of these arguments but they have become so polarized so extreme so driven in different directions by people that have hijacked the conversation by people that, that have twisted the message you know don't don't let that happen that that's one of these things that should be highlighted by both brexit by this by the stuff happening in, in Europe, by the stuff happening all over the world. It should all be a case of um, like greater conversation, greater understanding, working this stuff out. You know, there's no um, there's no issue that, that can't be discussed and, and solved over time. So that's, that's the first thing that I want to say. The second thing that I want to say is for those people who are upset especially, um, for those people who are upset, for those people that are frustrated, for those people that may come to regret the way that they have voted as things unfold. S okay, simple thing. And this is this is coaching stuff. Yeah, this is really simple. What you need to do now is you need to decide on what your goal is. You need to address it realistically. You have to see what options are available for you. And then you need to pick from those options and move forward with them. You have to push forward. You cannot just expect your 
your vote to to have made a big difference you cannot just expect for your your world to suddenly get better you can't then believe suddenly that that oh you made the wrong decision you wish you could take it back and all the rest of it wishing is fine it will never come true but there are things that you can do for those people that want to make sure that trump can't possibly um ruin the things that the you you know want to to hold dear then you need to f work within a system find out how it works uh, educate yourselves on the issue and then you need to as follow this four step plan of just just choosing your objectives finding out how realistic it is for you guys to actually uh, move towards those things looking towards um, the different options, the best options that are all, again, realistic to allow you to, to achieve those things and the, the preparations, you know, how realistic is it for you to, say, get the money you require or the people you require or make your voice heard, heard in such a way. You know, you have to find all of those things and put them together. And then after that, you need to move on and uh, look much more substantially towards... Um, the, the way that you're going to move forward and then after that you need to make sure you don't give up but you also need to make sure that you adapt to your situation because the world is ever-changing so you must be ever-changing within what you're attempting to do you need to make sure that you adapt and then the last thing that I would say is that regardless of what happens unless very literally someone starts slapping buttons or, and, and launching nukes what it comes down to is that this isn't the end of the world. I honestly can't really see Trump doing a great job, granted, but I, do I feel that Hillary would have done a great job? Not in and of herself. I think she probably would have just carried on with status quo as is and the things that were specific to her would be a mess. But, um, you know, can I see this being um, a big issue going forward? next couple of years are going to be rocky but you've got an interim like election for for not the president obviously but for lower representatives in the state in the states um in two years time thereabouts in which case go out and vote you know speak your mind make it work um if you really want to stop donald trump from doing things then the easiest way to do that is to make sure that your side wins in the the senate and the house because that's what happened with obama and that's why half the things that he wanted to do didn't even remotely come to pass because they got locked up in the the administrative kind of faffing around um and so you know simply put don't give up try and to, don't don't just entrench yourself in your side have the conversations talk to people work things out because you're all stuck in the same boat you're all stuck on the same country yes there are lots of people trying to leave now irrationally in my mind you know uh was i super happy about the um the brexit vote for example no does that mean that i instantly want to pick up and leave the country if i could also, no, I'd much prefer to, as much as I may not be the biggest proponent of um, tradition and British values and like sticking to all of these things that are kind of nebulous and pointless anyway, what I will say is, you know, this is my home and there's no point in me leaving it if I want to see it work, if I want to make things effective, if I want to try and help, there's no point in me leaving, you know, leaving is running away. So don't run away. Don't just fly off the handle, because that's how all of this started. Irrationality, hatred, fear. All of those things are what started this mess in the first place. So don't give in to those. Logic, facts, conversation, debate, discussion, you know, steps of the forum stuff. Anyone that wants to speak, have them come in and speak. Sit them down, ask them questions. No insults thrown. Just have the conversation, get the understanding going. Try and get the rapport going so you can have understanding both ways. Because if you've got understanding both ways, then it doesn't matter if you've got a difference of opinion. I have difference of, differences of opinion with clients, with my, my um, 
my family, with, with my girlfriend, with my friends, whatever, if you've got that understanding though, if you've got that rapport, then it doesn't matter if you've got the, 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 the differences in opinion, the differences in priority, you can still sit down and make something that works. That's the important thing to take away. Uh, my name is Seb Tudor, I'm the man on Silver Mountain. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I know that this video may strike some nerves, but again, what it comes down to is there are reasons for why this has happened. We can take those reasons away. We can, we can try and understand them. We can try and understand each other, and then we can actually move forward. And all of these issues, every single one of them involves everybody. And they're easy, really easy to, to just deal with. You know, so many of these big controversial issues are, are nothing. But anyway, let me know in the comments down below. Are you happy about Trump? Are you sad about Trump? Uh, angry? Upset? You know, on what grounds? Um, let me know. And uh, otherwise, I will see you guys in a video tomorrow that will... I want to say maybe not be as miserable, but it might be miserable. I don't know. I, I haven't entirely decided on what I'm posting tomorrow. But I'll see you tomorrow anyway. And uh, subscribe for more if, uh, if you found this at all helpful. So, uh, yeah, take care, guys. And again, congratulations to Mr. Trump and commiserations to, uh, to Mrs. Clinton.